everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make a necklace today and I'm going to use some of the products that came in the most recent Adornable Elements Rotating Beads of the Month Club. This time I got the 11 Ohm Miyuki Seed Beads. And I'm also going to use this little 14mm Air Blue Opal Heart Pendant Swarovski that came in the Crystals Companion Pack that I got this month. I'll leave a link in the corner of this video and in the description box below to the unboxing video I did for this subscription in case you want to go back and watch it where I go into a little bit more detail about this subscription and how it works and all. I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail on this video because I'm already afraid this video might be too long. <laughs> but I do have a coupon code. It's Teresa10 and that's Teresa in all capital letters. And I'll put it on the screen here and in the description box below along with a link to the page to sign up for the subscription if you're interested. The coupon code will save you 10% off the first month of whatever club or clubs you decide to sign up for, but you can only use it one time. And if you sign up for the rotating beads of the month club, the one that I get, they'll put you on the same rotation that I'm on, which means you'll get the same collection of beads that I do every month. I'm going to be using the silver lined capri blue beads that came in the box. I'm going to be using some of mine, my 11 ohm Miyuki galvanized silver seed beads and some of my 15 ohm Miyuki galvanized silver seed beads. I'm only going to use the 15 ohms at the clasp area. I thought about using two of the blues that came in the box, but I was afraid that it would be hard for you to see what I was doing if I used two blue. And I usually like to mix in a neutral with the colored beads when I do a project anyway. So that's why I'm using my silver ones and just one of the colors of blue that came in the box. In here, other than the heart pendant, I've got a lobster clasp, I think I've got five 4mm jump rings, a 6mm jump ring, and an 8mm jump ring. I've got a heart spacer bead that I'm going to put on this ball head pin to make a dangle to go off this little piece of extender chain I've got here. I've got a bail. I've got some chain I'm probably going to put on the back of the necklace. I don't know how much yet though because I don't know how long I'm going to make the beaded part of the necklace. I've got my size 11 tulip beading needle. I've got my size or uh, my 8 pound fire line and smoke. I've got my scissors to cut my fire line. I'm not going to drag out all my tools like I usually do and show them to y'all. You'll see them as I use them, but I'm going to be using my chain nose pliers, my tweezer pliers, my cutters, both pairs of my bent chain nose pliers, my round nose pliers, and my crimping pliers that I use to tuck in the little burrs that are left when I cut off the wire. And I'll be using my little New Orleans shot glass to put my wires in when I cut them off. And I've got a piece of 22 gauge German style wire here because I'm going to try to wire wrap this little heart pendant. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but wait, Teresa, <laughs> you don't like to wire wrap things and you're not good. You say you're not good at wire wrapping and, I'm, and I don't like to do it and I'm not good at it. But I couldn't figure out anything else to do with this pendant. I wanted to do something pretty with it and I didn't want to put a pinch bell on it because it's so small. I was afraid that would cover up too much of it. And so I need to learn more about how to wire wrap anyway. So I've been watching videos and I've been practicing and I think maybe I can do it. So I'm going to try and I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> so hold on, let me get some of my beads poured out and I'll be back. Okay, I've got some of my beads poured out here and I've got my needle threaded and I'm leaving about a 14 inch tail. I usually just measure it against my bead mat and I know my bead mat's 14 inches wide to go back and put my wire guardian on. I forgot to mention I have two wire guardians in that little dish too. And this is just twisted tubular herringbone. We've done twisted tubular herringbone before, but I, before I did it with eight O's and I did six beads around. And in this case, I'm only going to do four beads around because I need it to be, I want it to be a dainty little chain anyway. And then I need it to be small enough to go through that bail that I've got. So I'm going to pick up four of my 11 O's. And I'm going to go up through the first two, back up through the first two. Just doing a ladder stitch here at the beginning. And that puts those two next to the two next to two there. Now I'm going to go down these two. 
Now I'm going to pick up two of my blue. Coming out the bottom, I'm going to go on the top of these two. Lighter stitch them on. Go back up these two blue I just added. <clears throat> now I'm going to pick up two more blue. Coming out the top, I'm going to go on the bottom. Go back down the two I just added. And that's as big around as my little rope's going to be this time. When I did it with the eight O's before, I did six, but this time I'm just doing four columns. So I'm going to go back up and down through these to reinforce them until I get back over here to where my stop bead is. I'll put a link in the description box below to the twisted tubular herringbone video I did before too in case you want to watch it. It's probably easier to see what I'm doing with the bigger beads and I probably go a little bit slower than I'm going to go in this one although I never do anything fast so <laughs> I can't imagine this is going to be fast. So now I'm going to turn it into a tube. I'm just going to fold it over here and I'm going to go I'm coming out the bottom of these two silver beads here. I'm going to go in the bottom of these two blue beads and then I'm going to go in the top of these two silver beads. I'm just circling around to get these sewed together. And I'm going to come out the opposite side here, the side opposite my stop bead. Now, there's not a whole, whole lot to hold on to here. When I did the twisted herringbone before, I put a crochet hook up through the center so that I could hold it steady, but there's not much of a center to put anything through here, so I'm just going to try to hold it. So I'm going to pick up two of my silver beads. I'm going to go down one of my silver beads in this column. This first stitch is just going to be regular herringbone. It's not going to be twisted because I don't have enough to do twisted with yet. I'm going to straighten my beads up so that the holes are facing up like we need them to do in herringbone. Now I'm going to go up this blue bead here. Spin it around here and I'm going to pick up two more blue. Go from the top of this blue into the top of this blue. Straighten my beads up with the holes facing up. And this is my step up. I'm going to go up two silver. Now from now on it's going to be, we're going to do twisted tubular herringbone. So I'll pick up two of my silver because I want the same beads on top of the same beads. I'm going to pick up two silver, go from the top of this silver into the top of this silver. Straighten my beads up. I'm going to go up this one blue bead. Spin it around here and pick up two blue. Now, if I can get them on my needle, they're either wanting to jump on my needle or not stay on my needle. Now I'm going to go down this one blue bead next to the one I'm coming out of. And straighten my beads up. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go up three of my silver. And this is my step up. And this is what's going to make it twist. Now I'm going to pick up two more silver. I'm going to go down, go from the top of this silver to into the top of this silver. Straighten my beads up. Go up one blue. Spin it around. Pick up two blue, go down one blue, and then go up three silver. 
that's my step up. Now I'm going to spin it around, pick up two silver, go down from one silver to the next silver, straighten up my beads, go up one blue, spin it around, pick up two blue, go down one blue, straighten up my beads, and then go up three silver. Now I'm going to I'll just do one more and then I'll leave you alone. I'm going to pick up two silver. Go from the top of this silver to the top of this silver. Just down one. I go up one blue. Spin it around. I'm going to pick up two blue. Go down one blue. Straighten up my beads and go up three silver. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I get the length of the rope that I want. I'll come back in a little bit whenever you can see more of the twist and show you what it looks like. So I'll be back. Okay, I just wanted to show y'all how far along I am here. I've got... Uh, I think I measured it here and I've got, yeah, I've got about seven and a half inches done here. And you can see the twist beginning to, or not beginning to form. <laughs> you can see the twist in it there. Uh, I really like the twisted herringbone. I think it's pretty. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do probably about 14 inches, I guess. And then put a little bit of chain on it. I don't want to, want to make it too terribly long like I tend to do a lot. <laughs> so when I get my 14 inches are done, I'll be back and we'll put one side of the wire guard on. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got my 14 inches done now. And I'm going to put on one side of my wire guardian. But first I need to sew these ends together. They're, they're not together, so I need to sew them together. So I'm just going to go down two. Coming out the top of this silver, I'm going to go down the top of these two silvers. And then I'm going to go up these two blue. And back down these two silver. Back up these two blue. And I'm going to spin it around here. And go down these two blue. Up these two silver, and back down these two blue, and back up these two silver. I think it's my end sewed together there. Now I'm gonna, I've got my 15 O's here, and I'm gonna take. Two fifteen O's, one eleven O, and my wire guardian. And I'm going to go down the other channel of my wire guardian. Back into my eleven O my finger over the wire guardian so the thread lands in the channel. I'm going to pick up two more 15 O's. <clears throat> and I'm going to go in the opposite, the bead opposite from the one I'm coming out of. So this opposite blue. I'm going to go down. I'll just, I'm going to go down two beads if I can. There's quite a bit of thread in there now where I sewed around it. I guess I'll just go down one bead. <laughs> OK, 
Okay. Now I'm going to go up this blue next to this that one. Pick up two more 15 O's. Go back up that 11 O. Back around my wire guardian. Back into the 11 O. Hold my finger over the wire guardian. I'm going to pick up two more 15 O's and go down into the, the little tower that I've not gone into yet, which is these, uh, this silver one. And pull that through. And that puts two 15 O's coming out of each of my four little towers there. And now I'm just going to reinforce this. I'm just going to go up these two uh, blue ones here. And I'm just going to come out them for now. Then I'm going to go up the two 15 O's above them and into the 11 O. I think. <laughs> yeah. Go back around the wire guardian again. Back into the 11 O. I'm going to hold my finger over the wire card and I've not got through that 11 o yet. I'm going to have to do them one at a time here. Come back into the 11 o Now I'm going to go down the two 15 o's on opposite the ones I just came through. And I'm going to go down into a couple of those blue beads. And then I'm going to try to reinforce this other side here. I don't know if that wire guardian will take me going around it again, but I'm going to try. So I'm going to go up these, these two 11 O's. These two 15 O's. into the 11 O I go around my wire guardian again hold my finger over it I'm going to try to go back into this 11 O again. It's giving me a lot of resistance. I'm afraid I'm going to break my bead if I try to force that, but I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I'm going to pull this through with my pliers and hope that I don't break my bead. And I didn't. That's always risky when you do that. You might very well break your bead. And now I'm going to go down the other two 15 O's that I hadn't gone through twice yet. And back down into this column of 11 O's.
Now I'm just going to go down through here and tie three half inch knots and end my thread off and then I'm going to put the other uh, wire guardian on the other side just like I just now did and then I'll be back. Okay, I've got my other side of the wire guardian on now. Now I'm going to put my findings on. But before I put my chain on, I meant to, before I put my wire guardian on, I meant to slide this bail over my rope that I've made here and I forgot. But I think, yeah, it'll still go through there. So we're good there, okay. And I had a six millimeter jump ring that I was going to attach my, well, first I'm going to attach my chain with these four millimeter jump rings. I've got a couple of pieces of chain here. They're about three inches each. Try to get this chain on here to open my jump ring up a little more. I like this chain, but it's got very small little links, and it's hard to get a jump ring through it, even these little four millimeter ones, but there we go. I'm going to put this side of my necklace on. Close my jump ring back up really well. I'm going to take another four millimeter jump ring. And put this chain on the same way. Put my other side of my necklace on. And I, I was going to attach my lobster clasp with a six millimeter jump ring. But I know those six millimeter jump rings that I have won't go through this chain, so I'm just going to attach it with a four millimeter. My pliers get magnetized and my chain wants to stick to my pliers. Here we go. I'm going to put my lobster clasp on here. Close my jump ring back up really well. Now I need a bigger jump ring on this side for my lobster to clasp onto. So I'm going to have to take a four millimeter. And put my chain on here. And then put my eight millimeter on that. And now I'm going to, before I put my extender chain on, I'm going to make my little dangle here. So I'm going to, which way I want this to go, <laughs> which way I want it to dangle, I guess I'll do it this way. So when it dangles, it'll be dangling with the point down. So I'm going to take my pliers and go to the very tip of the pliers bend over the pliers at a 90 degree angle go around those pliers and put them in the crook of the bend around those pliers facing me bend the wire back until it hits the bead rotate the pliers till they're facing the table hold on tight and take this part up and under here until it hits the bottom of the tool Cock the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. Well, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I think I, my, my uh, ball of my head pin came loose or, or something. Hold on, let me get another one. 
Okay, I figured out what happened here. I'm going to have to reorient my little heart. The hole at the top of this heart is too big, and my little ball of my head pin goes through it. So I'm going to have to do it this way. So now I'm going to take my pliers and go to the tip of the pliers, bend at a 90 degree angle. Take my round nose pliers and put them in the crook of the bend, round nose pliers facing me. Bend the wire back until the until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers until they're facing the table. Take this part up and under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. I'm going to take my bent chain nose pliers and I'm going to open my loop just a little. Slot on my extender chain. And close my loop back up. The links on this extender chain open easy, but I have a hard time getting them closed back again because the way it's that chain is shaped, it's always slipping. I think I could use some flat nose pliers to do that with. I'm going to have to get me some. Now I'm going to take my other pair of bent chain nose pliers and start wrapping. Get that first wrap good and tight. And I'm just going to wrap till there's no more room to wrap. I'm going to take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. I'm going to take my crimping pliers. I take the part there at the end that has a little half circle on each side and tuck in the little burr where I cut off the wire. And now I'm going to take my 8mm jump ring that I've put on here. And open it up my extender chain with my little dangle on it here. Make sure to get that closed back up really well. So now I've put it off long enough, I'm going to have to try to wire wrap this heart. <laughs> so hold on, let me get my stuff to do that with and I'll be back. Okay, here we are, the moment I've been putting off. I'm gonna try to wire wrap this heart. Like I said, I've been I've watched a bunch of videos and I've been practicing and I found a video that was the easiest for me to do. There's so many ways to do this, but I found the a video that was the easiest for me to do. And I can't remember the lady's name, but I'll find it and put the video that I went by and a, a link to it in the description box below. And I did these little earrings here with my other two hearts. And I decided they were close enough to the same that I could make them into earrings. They're not exactly the same. My little swirl there is not exactly the same on both of them. But it's probably as close to the same as I'm ever going to get. So I decided to make these into a pair of earrings. And that's what I'm going to try to do here with this heart. The same little wrap thing here. I've got about a seven and a half inch piece of wire. This is way more than I'm going to need. But I don't know what I'm doing. So I need a lot. <laughs> So I'm going to, let me zoom in here a little bit so y'all can see this, probably what's going to be a failed attempt. I'm going to put my wire through my bead here, and I'm going to go about halfway. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect because, I've, like I said, I've got plenty of wire here. And I'm going to bend this up, both my wires up. It's a good thing it didn't matter. It's nowhere near the center. And I'm going to try to get my little triangle to meet right above my bead. And I don't want a whole lot of wire up here. I don't want my bail to be real long. But then again, I don't want it to be real close to the heart because I definitely don't want to risk breaking it. And I want it to be able to move like that. So I think I'm going to go about right there. And then I'm going to take both pieces of wire and I'm going to twist. And then I'm going to take this P 
piece of wire and I'm going to make a wire wrap loop. I'm going to take my pliers and go to the tip of the pliers and I'm bend it in 90 degree angle. I'll take my round nose pliers, put them in the crook of the bend. Round those pliers facing me, and I'm going to bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part up and under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. I'm going to take my, well, I don't know if I was in frame for any of that. I'm going to take my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. I'm going to have to work around this wire back here because it's in my way, but I'll move it down like that. Now I can do this part with my hands because this wire is so long. So I'm just going to make my, make my wraps. Okay, now I'm going to off my extra wire here and I'm going to take my crimping pliers and tuck in my little burr very carefully because I don't have a bead to brace against like I usually do now I'm going to take this part and I'm going to lay it down here I'm going to take my ruler and I've discovered that about an inch and a quarter is a pretty good amount of wire for me to do this with. So I'm going to cut off and leave about an inch and a quarter. And now I'm going to try to make my coil. And I want to coil it down toward the heart. So I'm going to take my Round those pliers. I'm going to go to the very tip of my wire with the very tip of my round those pliers, and I'm going to try to make the tiniest little loop that I can here. I never seem to get it as tiny as I want it to be, but <laughs> I'm just going to do that until it is the other wire. Now I'm going to take these pliers and I'm going to hold on to my loop and I'm going to start coiling inward. Just slowly and carefully. A little coil. I think one of the problems I've had in the past when I tried to do this was getting in too big a hurry. I think this is something that you just have to slow and take your time with. I'm going to try to keep coiling it until I get it down in front of my heart. I think I can do it that way. I'm going to have to keep doing it this way. Well, I need to get down here where y'all can see me. Get it mashed up against my heart. 
hurt there a little bit. Okay, I think that's about as best as I'm going to be able to do. I think I can live with that. <laughs> so now I'm just going to take a four millimeter jump ring I think will work. And I'm going to open it up and put my little heart on here and put it on my little bale. Make sure to get my jump ring closed up really well. So that's what I've got. So hold on, let me get everything cleaned up and I'll try to get it laid out and I'll be back. So there's my twisted herringbone necklace and my little wire wrapped heartbeat focal and my little wire wrapped heartbeat earrings to go with it that I've made from the most recent Adornable Elements Rotating Beads of the Month Club subscription. This time I got the 11 OC beads. Can't wait to see what I get next month. And then I got the Crystals Companion Pack, which is what had these little Swarovski heart beads in there. I guess I can live with that wire wrapping. It's probably the best job of wire wrapping I've ever gonna be able to do. I'm just not really very good at wire wrapping. Like I said in my unboxing video, I'm. As far as I know, Gina from Orchid and Opal Jewelry and Beads will be back in October and back to doing her usual unboxings with this subscription and, and the other subscriptions she does. I hope you all will continue to come back and watch my videos and uh, my unboxings and my tutorials. They're going to put me on a different rotation from Gina, so we won't be unboxing the same beads every month. It'll be different beads and we'll be working with different beads. So I hope you'll come back and... Uh, watch me too. I noticed that Jennifer Miller got her, she did her unboxing for her beads a couple of days ago. She got the gemstones beads and she also got the same crystals companion pack that I did and she got the findings companion pack too. And then Kelly from Being Jewelry and Artwork got her, unboxed her subscription a couple of days ago. It might have been the same day that Jennifer unboxed hers and Kelly gets the hot and trendy beads of the month club and the two hole beads of the month club. So I'll link all their channels in the description box below so you can check them out. They make beautiful pieces of jewelry from the beads they get from this subscription. Uh, these beads are such beautiful beads and such high quality beads and they, they're they so well coordinated and go so well together that it's just really a lot of fun to work with them. Uh, and like I said, that coupon code will save you 10% off the first club, the first month of whatever club or clubs you decide to sign up for. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, hope y'all have a great day. Take care.